It's just after dawn and Chris and Ian Lermoth are already well into their working day at Stocks Farm in Suffolk. The brothers have been struggling to keep their farm open since the global recession hit hard in 2010. Consecutive bad harvests, harsh weather and rising feed costs has killed profits and now Chris and Ian are struggling to break even. The last three years it's made it very, very difficult. Um, in fact, before Christmas we were going to give up, we were going to stop because you know we went last summer, like I said earlier, six weeks on 30 pounds it's a, and the rest of the time we don't take much else you know it's it's you know we don't get a wage it, you know you know if we get 200 pound a month we are we're <laughs> we're having a good time <laughs> lack of sleep hard labor and endless working days is what it takes to run stocks farm no, it's not, not there's no overtime it's just all the time <laughs> uh... i actually go to bed at sort of 10 11 and get up at one but then when I go after that I just sit on the chair downstairs um, so I don't go back to bed or sit in the van sometimes I'll sit in the van for a couple of hours and then get up again and uh, go and check the sheep the amount of labor that Chris and Ian devote to running stocks farm not only takes a physical toll but also an emotional one the winter time is depressing it's <laughs> you start looking at trees and I could swing from that one. <laughs> it's uh, it does get you down. You know, you get cold. Cold isn't too bad. But when you get cold and wet, and it's like, like you, oh, you know, like it's just silly things. Like you've got an armful of straw, and you're trying to get it in the house, and your welly boot comes off, and then you step in a load of like wet mud, and it's just it's those things, and you just have to laugh at it. Growing Communities is a community-led organisation that helped pull Stocks Farm away from the brink. Um, we came in contact with Stocks Farm first of all back in 2001 when I was trying to set up the Stoke Newton Farmers Market in the really early days of that and in fact Chris, um, who's the elder brother of the two, was the first farmer to say yes that he would come to our market which considering the market didn't exist, the market was in Hackney, um, they'd never been into London to a market before, was a really big um, vote of confidence in us that they agreed to do that. Growing Communities tries to provide an alternative to the established food system. This is done through showing support for local farmers like Chris and Ian. Where our food comes from is critically important. At the moment, the food we have tends to come from a long way away. It's a very vulnerable supply chain. Um, just the fuel strikes a few years ago showed you, you know, the supermarkets were cleared within days. Um, and we want to make our food also more sustainable, so how it's produced. So it's produced not using chemicals, not using pesticides that damage the environment. Every weekend, Chris and Ian make the 60 mile journey starting at 4 a.m. to the farmer's market in Hackney and Queen's Park. By selling directly to the urban community, they have been able to forge long-lasting relationships with the local residents in Hackney. Their regular customers only see one side to this story. There's too many costs at the moment. Uh, with the, the feed costs have been going up and up and up. Um, and you can't reduce the amount that you feed your animals. You've, you know, they've got to have feed, they've got to come first, whatever. Um, we've had a um, major mechanical failure on uh, our vehicle we used to go to London to the market with. Uh, and if that had happened six weeks earlier, we, that would have been the straw that broke the camel's back. That we would have just stopped because we didn't have the money to repair it. And there was no um, signs of earning the money to pay it. So, um, yeah, it's, things are very, very tight. Um, but, you know, we just take it week by week at the moment. This non-stop lifestyle affects all Chris and Ian's relationships from spending time with loved ones to making ends meet for Christmas dinner. At Christmas, Chris, did you get a turkey this year? Or did you get a little... No, no you didn't this year. Was it a bit of lamb? Yeah, two bits joined yeah, together. Two bits, two bits tied together to make a joint. Because <laughs> obviously for them it's better to sell it. Yeah. Because to get the money. Um, so, so, they, so basically they're just having a little... Yeah, we have whatever's left over. Yeah. Could have been a sausage for Christmas dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I would have tried to make sure that you got more than the sausage. You know, you can't go out on an evening or it's difficult to go out with friends and just even if we had the money, it's, it's difficult to get the time. You know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, my wife didn't like it. I was never at home like, like I am now, but it's just 
we see each other through the day, you know, maybe only five minutes, but we still keep in contact. Chris and Ian come from a long line of farmers, but this is not the life Chris wants for his children. Unless they change their minds, it stopped here. Um, you never know, one of them might change their mind later on and come into it, but it's nothing you'd wish on anyone. Although I enjoy it, you don't, you always wish something better. So I wouldn't wish for them to work 90 hours a week and have nothing in their pockets. The Lairmouth brothers have been reluctant to pass their rising costs onto their customers, but Kerry from growing communities has been able to persuade them otherwise. As a result of this, a small amount of growth has been achieved for the first time since their pivotal moment at Christmas. And also that, that coincided with the whole horse meat scandal, which has been phenomenal. It really has, between the two, I don't know which has worked best, but um, I don't know if Kerry and Julie put some horse meat in some of the meat in Tesco's or it's uh, it just, yeah, it's a blessing really. Despite their recent hardships, Chris and Ian Lermoth show no signs of giving up their farm just yet. At the moment, things are starting, you know, we can see you know, a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. It's, it's not a hobby, it's, uh, it's a living, it's a whole way of life. Um, but we do it because we believe in it. It's, um, it is hard, but you just got to sort of push forward.